Next one is by Vincent Ogutu, who's a Fulbright Scholar from Kenya, currently completing his PhD in organizational management at Rutgers University. He has an insight that could potentially overcome our current limitations and bandwidth and make his lifelong dream of teleportation possible, at least via more meaningful holographic interactions. <laughs> so please help me welcome Vincent Ogutu. Well, most of you have probably uh, seen Star Trek, and you're familiar with this scene, beam me up, Scotty. And if you've flown out of uh, JFK, LaGuardia, Newark recently, had to remove your belt, your shoes, empty your pockets, you might have preferred this means of transport. You might have wished someone could beam you up to Australia, or Africa, or uh, maybe Europe. But as we know, it's not possible yet. It's too complex to try and reproduce human molecules in their accuracy, in their detail, across a distance. It's just impossible. So what's the next best option? If we could project holograms of people that look exactly like them into a room and have them interact with people in that room, then we could simulate teleportation we could actually get that feeling that we've traveled to that place. So how did I come to start thinking about this? I don't have an engineering background, tech background. I have an economics management background. But as we were told for moonshots, all it takes is just to ask yourself that one question, why not? You know, why can't we find a solution to this? So how did I get thinking about it? I went to a school in Africa called Strathmore. It was the first multiracial school in East Africa, an excellent place to get an education and to make friends. And a few weeks ago, I was thinking about organizing a high school reunion, getting everyone together. But there's just one major problem. A, a good number of us don't live in the country. If we were to make it happen, I'd literally have to beam them in. And if I couldn't beam them in, then that's when my mind kept working. If I could get their holograms into the room, get them walking around, talking to everyone, and, uh, and why not? Why can't we do that? After all, recently, just two, three years ago, Tupac Shakur was beamed on stage at the Coachella Music Festival, and it really looked like he was there. So we already have the technology to create this kind of illusion using Pepper, Pepper's ghost technology. And uh, if we have the technology to make someone appear to be there, we have the technology to capture movement, like with the Xbox uh, Kinect recently, four people at a time, you can capture that. Why can't we do this? The main problem is that it's very different to try and capture information in a room and project it in the same room as to try and send the information across the internet. We have a serious bandwidth problem. You're sending a ton of information. It's very hard to do that. So that's the major thing we have to overcome, and that's where my contribution comes in. So I started thinking, how do we overcome it? The obvious solutions are expand the bandwidth, so infrastructure, or compress the information better in order to send it across. But then I decided to think a lot differently than that and say, is there another way of rethinking this issue? And so I thought, maybe we're sending too much information. We don't have to send it all. A lot of times when you're video conferencing or streaming, you're sending information to a buffer and then you're playing it off of the buffer as you keep downloading more information. But a lot of the information in the buffer is being downloaded over and over again. The first time we captured your information, we had all your visual characteristics. Why do we have to keep sending them over and over again? If we could transform them into some kind of avatar, then we would have an avatar that looks just like you, and all we need to send is instructions about how you moved on the other end. And in this game, Perception is reality. 
when you receive a phone call, you're not really hearing the person on the other end. You're just reproducing the frequencies that that person created when he or she spoke on the other end. And so with an image, if we can reproduce what you did on the other end and make it look exactly the way you did it, then we've succeeded. We don't have to actually capture everything you did and transmit all of it across. We just need to capture the movement itself send instructions in the form of vectors of crucial parts of your body, make those vectors interact on the other end with your avatar or hologram or pre-downloaded visual characteristics and reproduce the movement on the first end. As far as you're concerned, it's the same thing. That's what you're seeing. So we're sending too much information. We could solve this problem by thinking about it differently. I'll give you an example. If you take a single point on your face, say, the tip of your nose, and uh, think of it as a lever that you can operate, you move it up or down. No matter which direction you turn your nose in, your whole face and head will move in the same way. So we don't really have to send information about every single part of your head. We just need to capture one point, track its movement, send the instructions about that one point, and the software on the other end will understand that the entire head needs to be moved. So again, we're reducing the problem of sending the information to just sending vectors, which of course will be transmitted faster than text, which is transmitted faster than images and sound. So we're changing the problem and thinking of it as just sending numbers and making the numbers do the work. We also don't need to send information about the entire body. We just need to track movement. So if a part of your body is not moving at all, then the instruction on the other end is keep things as they were in the previous frame. Don't move them at all. Just focus on the parts that are moving. And another way to speed this up is to uh, form a kind of hierarchy of the different kinds of movements and prioritize them. Which ones do we really absolutely must get across? Is it the head movements, the eye movements, etc.? And then the others could be at a lower hierarchy. If the bandwidth permits, we'll send them across. If not, we'll start with the most important. And so that way, we will still beat the system. And some of the advantages are that uh, you don't have to reduce quality on the other end. You don't have to reduce the definition just because the bandwidth is smaller. The definition's already set at maximum from the first time, and you just interact with it the entire time. And uh, so how will this change things? We will not need to spend all that money traveling. We'll have more time to do other things. We can even see a doctor remotely, have a full body examination. The doctor tells us, move this, how does it feel? We could reduce our carbon footprint. And uh, for whatever reason you'd like to do this, I'd like to have my high school reunion. So may the force be with you, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vincent. And we're going to be opening up for five right, minutes. So that questions. sounds very cool. The, the two questions I have to ask are, do we have any estimation of the cost of, I'm assuming there's going to have to be device on both sides, and is there any issue with patent, seeing that it was at Coachella? Has there been any research as to issue? Okay, so on the projecting end, I'm still toying with uh, different ways of projecting, because there are different possibilities. One is to use the kind of technology they used at Coachella. It's actually just an illusion. You can even... Uh, check on YouTube, put a CD uh, disc in front of you and create an illusion. I did it last week. And uh, so you get a special kind of screen called a Mylar screen and you can do that. As far as capturing information is concerned, the Xbox goes for uh, less than $300. So it's easy to capture information that tracks four people moving at a time. So all we'd need to do is focus on the software, how to mathematic to reduce this to a mathematical problem. Okay, and anything on the patent side? Is there is there concern? Has it been researched at all? Um, well, right now it's just an idea that I came up with, so I'd need to do some more research on that. Um, I actually vividly remember the Tupac Coachella 
event. So thank you for bringing this up again. Um, I think it's really promising. My question, I would love for you to elaborate a little bit on the movement capabilities of the holograms. So would you be, if you, would your hologram be able to t like give someone else a hug, a pat on the shoulder? You said this would reduce our um, need to go on vacation. So if I want to go zip lining in Costa Rica, would I be able to do that with a hologram? So to what, what are the limitations there? Or I guess the possibilities. Okay, so it would be an optical illusion yes. for the most part. And the two ways of doing it, if we use the pepper ghost effect, you're using a screen that is at 45 degrees, you're projecting from the ground, and what people see are the reflection on that screen, which is transparent, so on the other side. And so... So they wouldn't be able to interact with each other, I guess is what not, I mean. They wouldn't be able to, to shake hands. But then if we used, say, Google Glass and created an illusion using Google Glass, then now I can do more. I can simulate people reaching out and shaking hands and uh, on both hands that see that sort of thing. And we wouldn't be interfering too much with the way they look because Google Glass is very unobtrusive, discreet. So that's yet another way to do it. And with that, probably we could have people shaking hands. Uh, thank you. Great present presentation. Um, I think you probably would have elevated yourself in terms of op awesomeness level if you were actually a hologram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And you I'm were real. somewhere remote. Um, I, I guess, uh, I mean, definitely had a lot of questions on the technical side, but uh, I'll, I'll just focus more on the, the social aspect uh, in terms of now that people can do more from their homes, like you said, you don't have to go visit a doctor. Or, do you think uh, there'll be more and more likely to want to do less activity? I mean, for example, I have a lot, when I have a lot of time, I, I find myself just looking down at my phone more and more often doing things, whereas, you know, the, the promise of extra time was to go out and enjoy more things in life. And I guess my question is, do you see any implications from a social aspect which can lead to other problems like health and other things by giving this kind of convenience to people? Um, Actually, when I was looking at how the Xbox was developed and you see some of the demos, some of what they're doing is really physical. So instead of playing games by moving a console and uh, firing and all that, you can actually be in front of your television on a carpet and you're just swinging your arms like it's a, it's a tennis, you know, ping pong racket that you have in your hand. And uh, you can get really physical. You can roll on the ground and it's simulating and tracking. You see your image and avatar on the screen uh, doing the same thing. So you could actually compete with people in other countries, say, let's go for a race, let's, you know, let's play some game, and it's, and it's physical, you're swinging your arms. The last question I had for you, you kind of see what happened with the visual reality space, and that's taking off immensely, and people are really adapting that. Do you think that this could be an offshoot technology, or do you think this would be a competitor to giving the, the feeling or the perception that you're experiencing something new and unique? Um, so this, this would be, I think it, you'd, you'd get the feeling that it's, that it's unique because it would take us a while to get used to it. We're not really used to interacting with avatars and having an avatar right in front of you and talking and then the avatar turning around, seeing someone else and saying, oh, hey, Joe's here too, uh, gotta go. And I mean, it, it's almost surreal. Maybe after a while we'd get used to it, but at first it would probably be novel. Excellent. Thank you so much.